An SQL database is a type of relational database management system that uses structured query SQL as its interface for interacting with and manipulating data. In a SQL database, data is stored in tables like spreadsheets with rows and columns. Each row represents a single record and each column represents a field within the record. They are stored on data storage systems, typically on hard drives or solid-state drives within a separate server. Some popular SQL database examples are MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL, SQLite, and so on. They are widely used in applications that require complex transactions and are efficient in querying, especially in traditional enterprise apps. Tables are the fundamental building blocks of SQL databases. Similar to a spreadsheet, each table holds data about a specific topic such as customers, orders, or products. For example, a customer's table might have columns for customer ID, name, age, email, and so on. Each column in a table is required to have a specific data type. For example, ID will be an integer, the name is varchar with length of 100, the age is also integer and the email can also be a varchar of a certain length. And each row in table represents a single record. For example, this query will insert one row in our database table. To connect multiple tables together, we have relationships which define how tables relate to each other. The most common types are one-to-one, -one, where each row in the table A is linked to one and only one row in table B. We have one-to-many or many-to-one, where a single row in one table can relate to many rows in another table. And we have many-to-many, -many, where rows in table A can relate to multiple rows in table B and vice versa. In order to connect tables together, we first need a primary key, which is a column or set of columns used to uniquely identify each row in a table. And we also use foreign keys, which is a column or set of columns in one table that uniquely identifies a row of another table. For example, here in orders table we have customer ID, which is pointing to the ID of customer's table. And we also have the products foreign key, which is pointing to the products table's ID. Using primary and foreign keys, we can join our tables, and SQL uses join to combine rows from two or more tables based on the related columns between them. The common types of joins are inner join, left, right joins, and full outer join. For example, if we want to join the orders and customers table, we can do this query where we select orders ID and customers names from the orders table, and we do inner join customers on orders, where order customer ID equals to the customer table's ID. And this type of join will return records with matching values in both tables. If we do the same query but with left join, it will return all records from the table on the left and the matched records from the table on the right. So the inner join fetches only the orders with corresponding customer information, while the left join fetches all orders, including those without corresponding customer information, and the missing values are filled with nulls. And the schema is what defines how the entire database is organized in these tables. It includes tables and the relationships between them, and the structure of each table, like columns and data types. We use it as a blueprint for how data is stored in the database and ensuring that data is organized consistently. And the next important part are indexes, which are special lookup tables that our database search engine can use to speed up the data retrieval. Suppose our example customers table has thousands of rows. We often need to query customers based on their city, which is not the primary key of the table, and in this scenario, an index on the CT column can significantly speed up these queries. In case there is no index on the CT column, a query to find customers in a specific city, say New York, would require a full table scan, and this is inefficient, especially for large tables. On the other hand, if we create an index on the CT column, and then the same query is executed, the database now uses the index to quickly find all customers in New York without scanning the entire table. And the difference in performance will be noticeable with large datasets. For small tables, the impact might be very tiny or even negative due to the overhead of maintaining the index. So indexes are improving the query performance. The primary reason for using indexes is to speed up query performance, especially for large tables. 
Without an index, the database has to perform a full table scan, which is a slow operation for large tables. Indexes can also enforce uniqueness for columns when you want to ensure that no two rows have the same value in certain columns. And they also improve the speed of data retrieval operations by effectively locating and returning the data. They are particularly beneficial for queries involving joins and order by and group by clauses. But they also come with trade-offs. One of them is increased storage. Each index you create consumes additional disk space, and the amount of space that it uses depends on the size of the table and the number and type of columns used in the index. It also adds maintenance overhead. Indexes need to be updated whenever data is inserted, deleted, and updated in the table and it means that write operations can be slower, and having too many indexes can make the query optimizer's job harder, potentially leading to suboptimal query plans. Also, indexes are stored separately from the data table, usually in a structure that is optimized for quick search and retrieval. Most indexes are stored in B-trees or variations of it like B-plus trees, but B-trees are the most common data structure used for indexing in SQL databases because they allow for fast lookups, insertions and deletions. And they also keep the data sorted and allow to do all these operations in logarithmic time. If you're curious what other data structures are used in SQL, they also use hash tables with a hash function to map keys to specific positions in index. Hash tables are very efficient for point queries where the exact match is known, but they are not efficient for range queries and do not store data in sorted order. In some simple cases, particularly for small tables or temporary workspaces, a database might use a heap structure, and this means that the data is unsorted and inserted wherever there is space. Heaps are fast for insertion, but can be inefficient for queries as they might require a full table scan. For some special use cases, databases might also use types of trees, including binary trees, AVL trees or red-black trees, and each of them offers different performance characteristics for balancing, searching and inserting and deleting the data. In some cases, SQL databases use R trees instead of B trees, which are types of trees that are used for special access methods like indexing multidimensional information such as geographical coordinates and so on. And for indexing certain type of string data, they use tries or prefix trees which can provide efficient means of searching for keys with common prefixes. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to not miss the next video which will be about SQL transactions and ACID properties.